Uh, hi, I'm Greg Vanderveld. Uh, I've been in the film industry for about 15 years, and uh, I'm a cameraman, cinematographer, VFX artist, editor, all around generalist. <laughs> So what inspired me to become a filmmaker was when I ended up helping out just a friend on their film project. I instantly fell in love and I was in the medical field taking uh, classes to be an EMT at the time and I just totally completely changed my entire uh, class schedule in college to just be nothing but film classes after I helped him. And after that um, I ended up getting an internship at a documentary film company and it ended up being such a good fit for me, personality-wise and passion-wise, uh, that it just ended up becoming my main type of filmmaking that I do. So when I'm a cameraman or a DP, uh, the setup process for an interview setup, for example, uh, is relatively the same every time. Uh, you very much have a traditional setup in terms of you've got three-point lighting, uh, you have like a key and a fill and a backlight back here. And um, a lot of times you're on a just a black background like this, or, um, you know, you can, you can be out on location and have a nice, you know, scenic background or something too. And that will definitely change the tools that you use, but the principles are still the same. For a, a smaller crew, you have to be able to record sound into your camera in a reliable way and have control over the lens and focus and uh, that kind of stuff. And it will, it will really vary depending on how many crew you have. So if one of the challenging things that we had to overcome on a shoot in the early days of drones, uh, they weren't great at landing on moving objects. So we had a shoot where we were filming on a sailboat that was modeled after like the 1600s and it had to be under sail and um, we had to move with the ship and land on it while the ship was moving and we had crew and actors and a whole bunch of stuff and so beyond what we had to do for just landing it we, we had to also we had to have like a backup plan in case for whatever reason it wasn't working so our backup plan for that was to have somebody with you know a full-on motorcycle helmet and Kevlar gloves and they had you know like body protection and stuff to be able to grab the drone if for whatever reason we weren't able to land so by far the funnest part of my job is that I get to fly drones uh, I'm the drone pilot for uh, a lot of the stuff that I do and it just blows me away that I get to play basically with a toy and get paid for it. Um, it's one of my favorite things because not only is it a great cinematic tool and I, I feel like that's when I'm getting really unique and beautiful things simultaneously, it, it really unlocks my creativity because I can have the camera anywhere in space that I want as long as this, there isn't another object already there. Uh, it's one of those tools that really looks good in establishing shots or, you know, chase scenes or, you know, uh, so many different applications. It's an amazing tool for the job. So one of my other favorite tools for filmmaking is either a Ronin or a stabilized gimbal or a steady cam rig uh, it's become one of my favorite things to use uh, since i do a lot of droning it's kind of the drone of the land and it allows me to get really cinematic shots without uh, setting up a dolly or a jib you know it, i can do those things just with my arms <laughs> and uh, or walking and it becomes something where you can create really cinematic stuff just with one person so how I learned to be an editor was uh, when I first got into filmmaking, I started out on Final Cut Pro and luckily then transferred over to Premiere, which I still use today. And it's a really easy tool to be able to 
you know, stay in one ecosystem. I, I use Photoshop, I use After Effects, I use Premiere Pro, and using all of them together really makes things easy for me. So when I'm editing, one of my favorite techniques for creating a project is just to make a really bloated version of the project. And I basically go through, I comb all the footage, and I create an assembly cut that is extremely long and has basically all of my favorite stuff in it. And then I'm able to look at the project and see what pieces I have and decide what I really want the story to be and how best to tell it. So when working in post-production, uh, something that I find to be extremely useful is exporting something and then watching it because when you actually lock in an export and, and you go back and view it, you can't change something on the fly. So it means that you have to take notes and when you're watching something, you, you can watch it 16 times, you know, 20 times, 100 times in the editor. And as you're going, you'll find stuff to do every single time. And it's, it's one of those things where you need the finality of having something that you can't change. And when you're viewing it, it will reveal things to you that you had not seen when you were actually editing. Again, my name has been Greg Vanderveld, and uh, this has been an interview for Josh, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk about filmmaking with uh, young and inspiring filmmakers. So hopefully there's something that you can get from this that is useful in some way.